dependency injection framework structure map. We're going to learn how to wire up structure map in two different ways in order to create objects and inject dependencies. We're going to do it the first way with using the configuration file method and then we'll look at how to use it, the fluent interface to create our, our uh, dependencies for us as well to wire them up. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is actually create our consumer class. What we're actually going to be doing today is creating a consumer that consumes soda. So we'll create consumer, we'll make him public, we're going to go ahead and create an, a public interface, isoda, in our soda we care about two things, we want, we want to know the number of calories and the name. Go ahead and move soda into its own class. And let's go ahead and derive a type from soda. We'll call it Dr. Pepper. Let's go ahead and implement soda using automatic properties. And again, we're going to move Dr. Pepper over to its own file. Let's go ahead and make sure this thing compiles because we don't go too far if it doesn't. And it sure does. Now, by the way, I'm using the, re the ReSharper refactoring tool. Uh, if you're not familiar with ReSharper, I suggest you go out to JetBrains.com and take a look. It's a phenomenal tool. Now, in order to use the configuration file, we actually need to create ourselves an instance of a structuremap.config file. And we need to lay it out similar, similar to this. Now, because we only have one assemble here, we just need to put in IOC demo. And basically what this will do is that runtime structure map will interrogate this configuration file look at each assembly and look for all types. Now to use the config file, we actually do have to use attributes. Ah, we need to implement consumer first, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Consumer wants to consume soda. Now in order to wire up our consumer, we actually need to use a few attributes. The first one is plugin family. We'll give it this a default key. And because I'm not using an interface here, I actually want to put the pluggable attribute on this as well. Normally when you're implementing this on interfaces, you'd put the plugin family on the, the type that you will ask for and the pluggable attribute on the concrete that will be returned. Let's go over to our iSoda and let's put the plugin family attribute on that. Let's go over to Dr. Pepper. We'll make this pluggable. Now, the connection between iSoda and a Dr. Pepper is iSoda is in inherited by Dr. Pepper. So, what's going to happen is the ILC container is going to look for this interface that has this plugin family and then go find all the concretes or any concretes that implement it that have a pluggable attribute and that these names match. In future episodes, we'll get into contextual binding where you can actually swap out the bindings at runtime. This, uh, in this episode, we're just, talk, we're just keeping it simple and keeping it basic. So now that we've got our interface and our concretes all wired up, let's go ahead and create a little test for this. Now, Structure Map uses a, a factory object called Object Factory. That's actually what you'll use to grab all your instances, and you'll call Get Instance. And we just want to assert that soda is not null. And if I go ahead and put a breakpoint right here and run this test, I should have myself a soda object. But I don't. I get a runtime error. What happened? Well, this runtime error you'll see quite often, and I did it intentionally because I want to show you what happens. If you forget to move your config file into your bin directory, you'll get this 202 error right here, no default instance defined. Well, what we need to do is go over to our structuremap.config, go over properties, set this to copy always. We want this to be in our our bin directory. 
I'll go ahead and recompile this, and let's rerun this. I now have an instance of my soda, which is a type Dr. Pepper. Great. We now know we've wired up the ISOD interface to the Dr. Pepper object. Now, let's, let's go and do some real dependency injection. Let's create myself a consumer. And let's wire up that where I'm asking for an instance of consumer. Now, because consumer accepts a ISOTA interface, if I've wired everything up correctly, I should get a consumer that has a Dr. Pepper injected into it for me. And sure enough, I have a consumer that has a soda of Dr. Pepper. I've done my job. Everything's great with the world. So we've learned how to wire it up via the configuration file. But I can hear you now saying, Derek, I don't want to use config files. I don't want to use attributes. All right, so let's go ahead and change this so it never copies. Let's, recom let's do a clean so we can delete that from our bin directory. Let's remove these attributes. And just to, show, just to ensure that everything's not going to work right now, let's rerun this. I'll compile it and rerun it. I should get an exception here. And I do. My test failed. Yep, another 202, so it no, doesn't know how to create a consumer. Well, that's actually good because now I know that nothing's wired up and I've cleaned the slate, so to speak. Now, if you want to do it through code, you typically do this on your entry point of your application, whether that be a website, you'd set up when the, the session starts, or if it's a client-server application, when the application loads. Um, but you need to find some place. For our test purposes, we're actually going to do it within the test. To configure everything on, through code, you'd use structuremap.configuration. And you would do add instance of, and I'm going to say isoda, using using concrete type of Dr. Pepper. I've wired up soda, so we need to go ahead and wire up my consumer. Now, if I've wired those up correctly, I should be able to rerun this test. It should generate a consumer object for me. And sure enough, it has. So we've looked at real quickly two different ways that we can do our wiring. We looked at how I could wire it up via the configuration files and using attributes. Or I can use inline code to set up all my dependencies and all my instances that way. It's completely up to you which way you choose. Uh, different scenarios call for different ways to do it, which is why it's built that way. You can even, instead of using the structure map.config file, you can actually go ahead and put your structure map configuration information inside your web.config or your app.config as well if you don't want to deploy extra config files. And that's really no different. The only difference is if you want to do it within your app config, you would need to do use the default. Oop. Pull configuration from config, you just set this to true. And then it would pull out your, your app config, your web config file as well. So there's various different ways you can wire this thing up, and I hope you learned something today. Until next time.